She was a virtuous woman, a loyal woman. Where thou goest, I will go. A dedicated, committed, and sacrificial woman. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. An outstanding woman of God. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Join the Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint for an in-depth look at the book of Ruth and exposing issues related to love and marriage, religion and culture, wealth and poverty, hardship and pain, joy and sorrow. This and every Wednesday night at 7.30 for a brand new Bible study series entitled The Truth About Ruth. The Truth About Ruth, Wednesday nights at 7.30. Welcome to the online Bible study series of the Edgewater Waterford Circuit of Baptist Churches in St. Catherine, Jamaica. And as usual, a special welcome to those viewing from overseas. May indeed our time around God's Word be meaningful and purposeful. But before we delve into our study tonight, let us pray. All-powerful, all-knowing God, we certainly thank you again for affording us the privilege of studying your word. We ask, good Lord, that you guide our thoughts as we delve into your word tonight. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those of you who have been journeying with us in this interesting and intriguing book of the Bible known as Ruth, you'll know that last time when we met, we looked at what we called episode 18, coming from Ruth chapter 3, verse 20, sorry, verse 2 through to verse 4. Ruth 3, verse 2 to verse 4. And in so doing, we subtitled that examination of the passage. Plot, plan, or both? We're asking, is it a plot, a plan, or both? And in so doing, we noted that we have arrived at some of the most controversial issues within the entire book of Ruth. Indeed, many Bible readers would seemingly prefer if these verses were omitted or modified in such a way that they are more spiritually palatable. We also noted the fact that whether we want to admit it or not, whether we want to call it a plan or a plot, we said that there are segments of Naomi's instructions to Ruth which are highly suggestive. And of course, When you look at the study, when you look at the text, they are quite evident in terms of when, where, and what she told Ruth to do in regards to Boaz. And it's against that background that we delved further into our study last time by saying that we need to take careful note of the following. Firstly, Naomi's humanity. Naomi's humanity. We noted that it is believed that her humanity was manifested by her impatience and also her indifference. She could not wait. She refused to wait until God's timing was obvious and God's timing was evident. And she became indifferent, indifferent to the fact that this could be interpreted in so many different ways, what she had instructed Ruth 
to do. And the main point we are making, if you will remember, is that oftentimes we allow our humanity to come into the picture to affect our spirituality. And oftentimes it ends up in a bad way. We also noted the socio-cultural reality. Yes, the socio-cultural reality of that time. And we noted the following facts in that regard. First of all, that both women lived in an extremely male-dominated society, wherein men had total control, especially in regards to marriages. We also noted that along with being a woman, Ruth was also an alien, a Moabitess, if you would, and a widow. Therefore, she was among the least likely to get remarried, especially within a Jewish society. We also noted that a woman expressing her availability and desirability for marriage was neither uncommon nor unbecoming at that time. So when you bear all those three factors in mind, the socio-cultural realities of the day, what Ruth did was not necessarily frowned upon because of those cultural realities. And so we closed last week by looking at the Lord's sovereignty because we're saying that the Lord is sovereign. He is in charge. He reigns, he rules supreme regardless of the circumstances. And we are saying that the Lord is sovereign regardless of the iniquities and inconsistencies of mankind. And isn't that so? That, that regardless of how we think and what we do and why we do it and where we do it, regardless of our sinfulness, Regardless of the fact that we will say yes today to the Lord and in the next minute we are saying no. Regardless of the fact that we do not operate on the same level all the time with the Lord. God's sovereignty is of such that he's able to override all of that and still get glory out of it. And also he's sovereign regardless of the influence and impact of culture. God is above culture. God is greater than culture. No, and no matter what is the cultural um, norm or the cultural practice of the day, God is still sovereign. And that is a real emphasis in the book of Ruth. You have heard me mention this word of sovereignty many times. It is because that is the hallmark of the book. All that took place did not um, preclude God from doing what he wanted to do. And so that going forward was our, our emphasis last time as we focused on episode um, 18. Well, tonight... We are fast forwarding now to episode 19 of our study. And tonight takes us to Ruth chapter 3, verse 5 to verse 11. Ruth chapter 3, verse 5 to verse 11. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. And she went down onto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn, and she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. 
And it came to pass at midnight that the woman was afraid, turned himself, or sorry, that the man was afraid rather, and turned himself. And behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, or thy robe over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight's study is subtitled, Response and Reaction. And we're looking on part one. Next time we'll be looking, of course, on part two. And we may have a part three to this. But tonight we're beginning to look at response and reaction. Now, immediately, immediately after Naomi gave her specific instructions to Ruth, that which transpired in chapter three may be summed up in the following words. One, response. And the response in this regard is from Ruth. And then two, reaction. And the reaction, of course, comes from Boaz. So response from Ruth, the reaction from Boaz. First of all, let's look closely at Ruth's immediate response found in verse 5 through to verse 7. Let me read it again for us. And she said unto her, and that's Naomi, or um, you know, Ruth said unto Naomi, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. So she went down unto the floor, did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. Now, what we are seeing here, beloved, is that her immediate response was total obedience to her mother-in-law, Naomi. Immediate response. Uh, Naomi gave the instructions. Ruth followed them to the T. This was so in spite of the fact that what Naomi instructed seemed, first of all, risky. Indeed, I we could say it was very risky. Can you imagine she went in the wee hours of the night went and lay at the feet of Boaz, uh, you know, sort of uncovered the section of his robe that were at his legs. She could have been killed. Boaz could have gotten up and just went for his sword and that would be that, been, a, been, been it for her. She would be a dead person maybe or severely injured. All of that was risky. She never told Boaz she was going to do this. She never told anybody, perhaps. It was a risky maneuver, but still she did it. Also, when you look at it at face value, it was tacky. It was a tacky way of giving indication in strong ways that she was interested in getting married to Boaz. There was no finesse about it. There, there, there was no nothing about it that showed any protocol of merit. It was very tacky. 
And perhaps Naomi instructed her this way because Naomi was not sure of the outcome. And so she wanted to just do it quickly, as quickly as she could, and to perhaps minimize some of the embarrassment that should follow. But it was very tacky. But, but I put it to us that perhaps above everything else, it was shady. Done in, in the wee hours of the night. Uh, nobody was told or nobody was prepped for this. She, she, she uncovered a section of his legs where he had his robe on and put it, you know, over her. It, 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 it was a shady looking thing and raised a lot of questions uh, and raises many eyebrows um, because of how and what was done. And here is the thing, that in spite of all of that, Ruth still obeyed Naomi to the T. Obviously, there was something about the impact and influence that Naomi had on Ruth's life that, can I say it? She trusted her judgment. She trusted her instinct. She trusted her decisions. She trusted her instructions that she followed them to the T. Risky though they were, tacky though they were, shady though they were, Ruth was not only willing to obey, but she actually obeyed Naomi. And I, I'm pausing here to Acknowledge the fact that sometimes that is how things work out. Sometimes when you come across individuals that you have great confidence and trust in, it's possible that one carries out their instructions without even asking any question at all. And if one does ask, questions, very minimal questions. Ruth really had confidence, tremendous confidence in Naomi's judgment. And what I think this ought to do for us is for every one of us who is in leadership, in seats of authority and influence on the lives of others, be very careful of what we say and the instructions we give. Be very careful of what we do and the lives we live because our influence may be more than we could imagine on the lives of others. Moving on, we go to Boaz's immediate reaction. We looked a while ago on Ruth's immediate response to the instructions that were given. Now let's look on Boaz's immediate reaction in verse 8 to verse 11. I'm going to read it again for us. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid, certainly, and turned himself. And behold, a woman lay at his feet. <laughs> and he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt, thy robe over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest for all the city, all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. I want to tell us that apart from his alarm at what Ruth had done, Boaz's initial reaction was most evident in his remarks to her. And those remarks are emphasized in verses 10 to 11. In so doing, he highlighted 
three outstanding things about her. And I'd like to just state them and to emphasize them. First of all, he highlighted her blessedness. Indeed, he said in the verse, Blessed or blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter. So in the midst of his scare, in the midst of his surprise, in the midst of this that has transpired right at his feet, literally, he says to her, you are blessed of the Lord. You are blessed of the Lord. Obviously, Ruth had had an impact so much on Boaz that in spite of what she had done, though it was risky, though it was tacky, though it seemed shady, he still said to her, you are blessed of the Lord. But he also highlighted her thought Fullness. He went on to say, Thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. Inasmuch as thou didn't, you didn't follow young men, whether they are poor or rich. What's happening there? The Hebrew word for kindness is hesed. And it means thoughtfulness, beloved. It means favor. It means mercy or sacrificial love and loyalty. He was saying to her that in essence you are thoughtful. Let me tell you why. It, and the clue is found in, in, in that verse, that segment that I just read. Because apparently Boaz was, you know, a number of years older than Ruth. She could have chosen some other younger person. Where she could have chosen some other young person who was poor or rich. But she chose him. And he's saying to her that you have been thoughtful in doing so. You have been thoughtful in considering me. You have been thoughtful in looking in my direction. And also her uprightness. Her uprightness. For he went on to say, Now my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that you are a virtuous woman. And a virtuous woman is an upright woman of high moral standards. What was he saying? He was saying that in spite of all that has now transpired, Ruth, I am reminding you, if you never know, I am emphasizing it, that you are regarded as a virtuous woman, an upright woman. So he emphasized these three things, her blessedness, her thoughtfulness, and her uprightness. And all of this is taking place in the wee hours of the night, midnight. Can you imagine? Others would have come and began to perhaps write her off, castigate her, condemn her, judge her. He's saying, I know you, Ruth. At least I know this about you. First and foremost, your blessedness, your thoughtfulness, and your uprightness. What an interesting and intriguing development in this story. It could have gone so many other ways. His response or reaction could have been quite the opposite. But he emphasized her blessedness her thoughtfulness, her uprightness. What are some takeaways from our study tonight? Two I leave with us. First of all, be careful of the instructions you give to others, even with the best of intentions. Let us be very, very careful. Next, there are those who have high expectations of us even in our lowest moments. And that is what Boaz shows in regards to Ruth. Even in those moments when he could have been condemnatory of her, he still had high expectations of her. There are two questions I'd like to leave with us to consider. 
over the next couple of days. Firstly, if you were Ruth, what do you think would have been your immediate response to Naomi's instructions? I mean, with all that, with all the implications of what Naomi had said to Ruth, what do you think would have been your immediate response? And then finally, if you were Boaz, what do you think would have been your reaction to Ruth's actions that night? How would you have reacted to the fact that she had come and lay in the wee hours of the night at your feet? How would you have reacted to the fact that she didn't tell you about this at all? What would have been your reaction? I'm looking forward to your responses as usual, your comments and your questions. And so I invite you, if you would like to do so for the first time or to do so again, to send those comments, questions and responses to the truth about roof 2022 at gmail.com. Again, the truth about roof 2022 at gmail.com. And as usual, I invite you to utilize, if you need to, our prayer and counseling hotline. The number is 876. 220 8762206474 there is someone really at the other end of that line willing and waiting to have counsel and prayer with you and so on that note of prayer i invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. Gracious God, we beseech you to continue to use your word to speak to our hearts. Tonight in particular, you have reminded us of the importance of being careful what we say, what we do, the instructions we give, the lives we live before other persons. Help us, O oh God, to not allow our impatience and our indifference to say and do things that would lead people down the wrong path. And finally, God, we ask that even when others have done things that have shocked us or surprised us, have saddened us, help us, O oh God, to not forget who they are and who we know them to be. Help us not to focus on the negative and to ignore and overlook the positives. Help us, O oh God, to affirm them instead of condemning them. Thank you, therefore, for speaking to all our hearts again tonight as we look forward to what is ahead in this chapter and the rest of this book. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube page. If you desire prayer and counseling, please call our prayer and counseling hotline at 876-220-6474. Continue to pray for each other. Have a blessed week in the Lord.